As you know, here on the platform, we are very much into free speech, unfettered a free speech within the bounds of decency and reason. And uh, we, like others, had been concerned that a few weeks ago, Kerry Allen, the Minister of Justice, in a television interview, came across all bullish on hate speech laws. Um, Andrew Little, earlier in this administration, had a crack at it and kind of looked to lose interest in it. Um, so when Kerry Allen came out all hot and heavy for hate speech laws a few weeks back, it had many people concerned. And there are going to be new laws, but maybe, just maybe, the government is walking back what appeared to be quite a hardline uh, position. To talk more about what is now proposed and what the process is, we're joined uh, by a good friend, Jonathan Ayling, from the Free Speech Union. Jonathan, uh, welcome back to the platform. Nice to have you here. But thanks, Sean. Always good to sit down with you. All right. So we have from we had from Kerry Allen what seemed to be a very hard line, enthusiastic prediction of uh, hate laws, uh, hate speech law changes by the election or before the election. Has she moderated that position a bit from what we've seen? Oh, more than a bit. Sean, uh, 18 months ago when these proposals were first released by the Ministry of Justice, there were six proposals released in the consultation and she's decided to take one part of one of the proposals that suggested a, a whole range of new um, communities and groups be included under hate speech law protection. It included uh, the LGBT community, uh, the disabled community, gender, uh, religious community. It, it, it asked whether you know, things like political opinion should be protected under hate speech law and, and how you can have robust democratic debate and have political opinion protected under hate speech law is just beyond me. So she has said that uh, out of the six proposals that were quite extensive that were released, she's going to do one thing and one thing only, and that is include religious communities as a protected class under the current hate speech laws that we have in the Human Rights Act. So this is a massive back down. All right, and obviously good news for, for, for your group, for people who believe in, in, in free speech. Absolutely. You know, it, it called call me naive, Sean, probably off air you have once or twice. Uh, I, I would say that we didn't have the power to push Kerry Allen or the Labour government into a corner on this issue. They have a majority, and we can see on other issues, if they're, uh, if they're intent on doing something, they're, they're quite good at ignoring the criticism or the backlash. And so I would say we didn't have the power to push them into a corner on this issue at some level. And I'm not saying the whole way, but at some level, I think they've been convinced that that this issue stands to be more of a headache for the communities than they're trying to help, mm. uh, that it's worth, that, that at some level, what Kerry Allen said on Saturday on News Hub Nation was that this could make things worse. And that's the basic argument. Hate speech laws don't work. Yeah. They don't stop hate. In fact, they usually... Uh, make those conversations harder to have. They make the the intensity of the feelings even worse, and that is why they are a bad idea. So we're really pleased that I think at some level she's heard reason. All right. Um, it was funny. I was at Jordan Peterson last night, and he was talking about you know laws that restrict speech. He says freedom of speech is actually freedom of thought, uh, and without freedom of thought, you have tyranny. I thought it was quite quite a good connection. They said we've got to protect freedom of speech. The proposed changes give religious communities some, well, it like makes them a protected group uh, under the current Act, and that is that you can't say bad things about protected groups, and we've got all sorts of minorities um, and diverse communities who fall under that. I think immigrants. Um, uh, but, but I'm going to say this. Why do we have to delineate who gets protections under hate speech laws? Why can't they just apply to everyone and to all groups? It seems strange to me that we're picking people and giving them special rights and special protection where surely it should be universal. Well, look, I, I was on the AM show uh, yesterday morning talking with Patty Gower, and, 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 and I'll just say quietly, Sean, I think you're a much better interviewer than, than Patty Gower is. But um, Max Tweedy joined us there from, from Auckland Pride, and, and that's 
kind of what he was saying. He was saying, look, you know, we experience a lot of hate. Why should religious communities, uh, you know, have this protection from criticism and being above the, the public conversation when we're the ones really experiencing this heat? And you're saying, well, why them? Why not other ones? And you know what, Sean, you and Max are both right. Yeah. The, the, question, the question, if them, why not us, is very legitimate. Yeah. And so that's why... You know, you say, why, why can't we all be included in this group? Well, yeah. Why I, I can't know. we all be protected? If, we, if, anyone, if one person needs protection against this hate speech, everyone needs protection and deserves protection against it. Well, uh, I, think, no, I, I, just, I, I don't agree with that at all. Because, I, mean, I, I, I would say none of us should have it. Because what you're saying is we should include everyone in these protected groups. So every identity or community groups would then be above in, uh, insult, uh, incitement to discrimination. Okay, and, I and, see what you're saying. I, I, yep. I, I'm saying, why, why not none of us? Why not? And this is what the Free Speech Union is, is, is really starting to consider. What do we need to do to just get rid of Section 61 and 131 of the Human Rights Act, which is where our hate switch laws currently sit, and just say, if you're inciting to violence, that's beyond the pale of free speech. Beyond that, we need to be able to have these robust discussions because, and Peterson's right there, Sean, it's, it's, it's been well established in research over many years. When we start shutting down our capacity to talk about things, our very ability to, to think independently and differently on these subjects is, is uh, constrained. And so without freedom of speech, we have no freedom of thought. Mm. And otherwise, we, 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 we start buying into this idea of, of, of thought crimes where we're having to, yeah. uh, to decide what the intent was behind it and, and, and when just thinking something could make us fall afoul of the authorities. Uh, it, it's not how democratic liberal governments are supposed to operate. Yeah. Look, the other thing, this may have unintended consequences and uh, I know other people have mentioned it, but I'll put the hypothetical here. Israel Folau, right? Because of his religious beliefs and the religious organisation or, or grouping that he belongs to, comes out against homosexuality. Um, and, well, he doesn't come out against homosexuality. He says, my religious beliefs are that if you're homosexual, you'll go to hell or you'll burn in hell. Now, he is cancelled. He loses his job as a rugby player. He gets piled on from a great height. And a lot of people are, are critical of him. If that had happened in New Zealand after these laws are passed, would Israel Folau have been un, uh, untouchable? Well, yes, it looks like that that would be the case. And and I think there's a real irony in that because for the past 18 months, the Free Speech Union has gone out to everyone who's calling for these hate speech law changes and said, look, just be careful here. You, 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 might, you might want to watch what you're wishing for because this, this doesn't always land the way you think it will and the shoe yeah. might be on the other foot. And so, you know, an example is uh, uh, Max Tweedy yesterday who I was talking to, or a more um, uh, aggressive example, I think, has been Shanil Lal, who has been incredibly involved in, in robustly pushing for protection for gender, for the, uh, the queer community. And now his very comments, you know, the, the comments that he's led against uh, um, Bethlehem College and, and, and other... And Jordan Peterson like is another guy that he's been trying to whip up hatred towards, yeah. Well, well, Jordan B. Peterson w wouldn't fall under the, the religious community protections, yeah. but Bethlehem College certainly would, as a, as a Christian school, you know, the vague general comments that, that Lal has made uh, could, could be seen as inciting that discrimination. And so now, the very efforts and the work that he's been putting into to try and drum up belief in these hate speech laws could be used against him. And, and I want to be really clear here, that is not a win for free speech. We, we, are, we are not saying that that is something that should be afforded. We would stand with Chanel Lyle's right to make the comments that we had. And, and, and look, I, I'm, I'm not going to say I think Chanel Lyle usually looks, listens to the platform at 7.15 on a Tuesday morning morning but on the off chance he does he can rest assured that the free speech union would defend his right to make the comments that he has yeah. even under these laws well this he's got a bit of a thing about me i've got to say chanel and we've invited him on the program many times he prefers to be play childish games on twitter um <laughs> yeah i i think i think that's where he feels um safer and then boot some quote marks but yeah, yeah. um the, 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 this is the entire point that the, that the 
almost always the the shoe falls in a different place with hexage floors and it lines up yeah. on the other foot. And uh, and and I I think uh, there's going to be a lot of people. We're going to it's going to be an interesting time over the next couple of months yeah. as these laws come out. We're going to see a lot of the people who were really pushing for them suddenly Go. realize. Oops. What they've done. Yeah, Stuart's asked me a question by text. Uh, Jonathan, he says, does does this legislation or would this legislation protect Destiny Church and Gloria Vale from criticism? That, 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 uh, it, it appears it will. Now, now the, the whole point with hate speech laws, and we've, we've said this the whole time, is they're incredibly vague and incredibly hard to say exactly where they fall. And so it actually often comes down uh, to courts and international jurisdictions to really decide those lines. In New Zealand, we have had very little use of our hate switch legislation, but definitely it could. And, and, and what that means is we could definitely see charges uh, brought against those who, who say that Glory Vale is predatory and unsafe for children or that Destiny Church, you know, are, are homophobes. Uh, th there could be charges that are brought, and even if the court ultimately didn't find individuals guilty of hate speech in those cases, uh, the, 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 the process is the price, really. And, and a good functioning legal system doesn't say, well, even if you're not found guilty, we're still glad we, we, we've had a word with you, you know? So that, that's the real danger there. But, but this is exactly right, that after all this process we've gone through, it is really some of the communities that we think are most worthy of criticism and most worthy of significant public debate that are now going to be protected. And, and I, I just don't think this is what the government intended, but that's the point with hate speech laws. That's the point with all speech restrictions. Once you start shutting the conversation down, you're never really sure where that's going to end. Yeah. And the point with free speech is it, it usually ends up protecting the, the people that are most worthy of criticism already, and it, and it leaves exposed those who actually are more marginalised or vulnerable in the community. That's, you know, the, the, the privileged and the powerful don't need free speech. That, that, they've got privilege and power. They've just got speech. It's the minority. It's the vulnerable. That this idea that anyone can say anything, it defends their rights because without free speech, they don't get a say. Yeah. So, Jonathan, this might be being spun as a walk back from the government in order to lessen public opposition but these are still bad proposed law changes, aren't they? And they still damage well, freedom of speech and discourse in this country. Ab absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to try and have my cake and eat it as well, Sean, because uh, I, I do think this is a massive U-turn. I think it is a big back down from the Labor government. Uh, we've, we've seen hate speech law reform on uh, a Labor's manifesto for, uh, I, I, I believe it was since the 2017 election. Uh, Minister Little was Justice Minister. Minister Farfoy was the one who really got it going. Minister Allen is now the one who's had to walk it back. We've seen a lot of people do their best to try and make this work and and i do think uh we've seen incredible restraint from the government now i think uh we need to give credit where credit's due whether because of principle or pragmatism uh they have listened to the submissions of tens of thousands of kiwis but ultimately you're absolutely right these are still bad laws it still hurts our conversations and we will continue to oppose them uh and and i think more and more people are waking up to why they're a bad idea now and so look let, let, let's not take it off the table. I think uh, Minister Allen is still going to have trouble getting these laws through without a big fight. And so from a political perspective, I think she's ended up with the worst of all worlds where she doesn't have the people who were calling for these really expensive hate speech laws on side with her. She still doesn't have those that are actually in favour of basic civil liberties and freedom of speech on side with her. And so I wonder what friends she's going to be left with. Act and National have both said they will oppose it. Act has said it would be a bottom line for them in government that any new hate speech laws be repealed. And so I struggle. And, and, and they're, they're, they're on the ticking time uh, clock now anyway, where we, we don't have a lot of time to get uh, pieces of legislation like this through before the election. So I think there's still a fight in this to see whether they get it done at all. But, but one thing I wanted to mention was the, the instruction 
beyond the new legislation that the uh, the minister said the law commission is going to do a quote deep dive into you know how we should be doing hate speech laws and so really we're seeing them left on the table but in some very vague form and grant robertson said yesterday that that he continues to want to see them uh to more aggressively advance and so this is a fight we need to keep up but i have no idea what the law commission will do or what questions they'll ask or who they'll talk to that the ministry of justice hasn't over the yeah, past yeah. few years and they'll, maybe and that's entire, kicking the can to, jonathan maybe they recognize the political uh, risk in this and that is a way to slow down the process and kick the can down the road mm. Mm. And, and yeah you know, absolutely that, uh, I think it's, it's their way of trying to keep it on the table, show that they're doing something to the people that care, but actually not not threaten those who, who feel like it's an issue uh, with political backlash. So I, I think it's poor leadership, though, at the end of the day, to, to really not not be pointing in a direction. The Law Commission's not going to come up with any answers that the Ministry of Justice hasn't. So we're walking around the same mountain again. And I say, actually, the, the Minister either needs to say Kiwis have resoundingly spoken that they don't want amendments to hate law. It's a bad idea for our government and we're dropping them. Or we're pushing on ahead with it. This is what I want to do. We've got a majority in government and that's the way it works. But one way or the other, we actually need a little bit more transparency, I think. And that's leadership to say, well, actually, I think this is what we need to do. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased the minister hasn't decided that course, but she actually needs to then just go, okay, it's a, it's a, a full there and the whole way around and we're going to actually get back to what people yep. and we care about. Yep. Thanks, Jonathan. Always good speaking with you. Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union. So a U-town on hate speech, but we're not out of the woods yet, yet folks. And really, um, as Jonathan said, this whole idea of special groups means some people get more protection under the law than other people, and that's just wrong. That is just wrong.